when I get here in the morning, I put the totes out, and then I also just make my rounds and do a little bit more cleaning, because depending on how busy they were before, it might need a little extra help. So, but this is kind of um, during throughout the day, actually. This is what I do, where I go up to the piler. Hopefully you can see that through my dirty windshield. Um, but I go up to the piler and I scratch back like that whole section right up against the piler. keep the end up clean and then that's my the dirt that I pulled back so then I'll scoop it up and take it to the dirt pile but when I get done that's about what it looks like it's pretty clean as clean as you can get for a dirt and gravel field here so just make my rounds and do that all the way across all every piler so right now it's 6.45, trucks can come at any time. We open at six. Um, usually trucks are here by seven, sometimes earlier though. So, but we have to be up and ready to go by six. So my first thing, I just jam out and try and put all the sample totes out cause that's uh, what they need first. And then I know which pilers we're gonna, what sequence we're gonna open the pilers, they tell me. So like today, Piler 1 is going to be open first. So then I go to Piler 1 and I try and clean around Piler 1 first because I know that one's going to be running. It's just so much easier to clean when there aren't trucks in your way, trucks or ground crew. So um, I do that first and then sequentially based on when we anticipate them opening. So like I know... We're gonna try and uh, finish piles one and four today. So those will be the busiest and they're gonna do their best to continuously send trucks there so that we can finish them off. Um, so I did those two first and then um, two and three, but we don't want a backup. So if there's too many trucks for piler one, you don't really want a line. You want people to keep coming through so that they can deliver, but if there's no line, absolutely, they're going to send them to piles one and four. That pile right there is almost done because as you can see between the back of the truck and the next pile, there's only that little gap there. They still have to be able to back the entire piler up and put the boom down. So um, they probably can back up one more time and they're done. So they're going to go move the power cord. So that power cord right now is stretched to that back pole. They'll pull it out. They'll all carry it down to this pole. But I'll probably jump out and help them. So, you can see. so now what we have to do is we fill in that center so it's um, square. So then we end up squaring off the pile. So they'll run the boom just a shorter distance left to right to fill in that pole. Okay, we're winding down here. I don't know if you can tell, but I have pretty dark circles under my eyes because I'm pretty exhausted. Um, it's not the 12 hour shifts per se. It's having to get up at four, like about 4.30 in the morning. That's uh, kind of wearing on me. I am looking forward to having a normal night's sleep where I don't have an alarm go off at 4.30 in the morning, but I'm not sure how many farms actually finished up last night. We're probably just waiting for a couple little stragglers left to finish their loads. So, 
Um, we'll see how today goes, but it does not look promising for a busy day. I think it's going to be slow. Um, the way that the seasons tend to work at piling sites, you have like a slow day or two, and then all of a sudden you get hit and you're super busy and you stay super busy for a while and then it just kind of falls off and then all of a sudden you're stuck at the back end with quite a few slow days as farmers finish up their fields but we still have to stay open because farmers are still hauling so the last chunk is what's exhausting because you're just not busy so time does not go by fast and then, um, in theory, the pile behind me uh, should be finished today. We're hoping that we have a couple more tandem trucks that come in because that pile is so small, that's all it can handle. And if we can get those in, then we can finish off the pile. Um, and we have probably more than twice the amount of beets that we had last year at this site. So it's really cool to see. Check it out. So there pile of beets over there. So last year, we that's the, the scale house right there. Let's see if we can get that to focus. So that little building next to the porta potty is the scale house. Um, and last year, we didn't even make it to the scale house. So for comparison, you can see we have more than twice the amount of beets that we had last year, which is really wonderful to see. Last truck for pile four. Ah, never ending harvest. Feed temps are too high, so they're sending those trucks away. It's super labor to move these pilers because right now they're moving it, but you can only move it a little bit of it at a time because that wing right there is the wheel on the end. It's that tire, you have to keep swinging that swing so that the tire is straight, otherwise you'll snap that wing off. So you'll see him flick the side forward. And then flick it forward again. Because you want that to keep up with the piler. Meanwhile, everybody down there is also pulling the cord. That's the power cord so that it doesn't pull over the power cord. That cord is heavy. You feel like you're a fireman. <laughs> <laughs> pulling along a fire hose that thing's heavy working on the last few trucks today this this com uh, farm only has one truck left to haul this is always the weird part in the season when all the farms are like starting to wrap it up but you're not quite sure if they're all done and so everybody's scrambling to kind of contact the farmers and ask the drivers and figure out how many acres each farm has left. But um, sometimes you don't even realize that this is pretty much it. And they think that they have another couple days of hauling beets, like we think, the site people think, um, all the way up the, the food chain here, think that there's a couple more days, but then it ends up being there isn't, whether it be the farmers, sometimes they'll switch fields and the field that they're at is closer to a different piling site and they'll be able to get permission to de deliver elsewhere. Um, and um, there's a lot of different things that come up um, where they might switch sites or they might be done before we know it. So then uh, what ends up being, we're waiting on four different farms to finish, ends up being, no, they're pretty much all done coming here. So um, I did hear that our neighboring site here, there's a site not super far from here. They're almost full, they're almost at capacity. So it'll be interesting to see if any of those trucks have to be diverted here to drop off. So that could prolong our stay open here. We have two piles left that we have space in. One of them can still deliver probably about a hundred trucks before it's at capacity. And the other one can, can take delivery of more than that. And that's just simple math based on um, approximately six trucks to do a pass on the, the boom all the way across. Um, and then the piler backs up 30 inches 
and then it can take six more trucks. This is semi trucks, six more trucks, and then it backs up 30 inches. So based on the distance from the back of the piler where it is now to where we want it to end up doing the math every 30 inches, six trucks and multiplying it out, we were guesstimating, um, we probably have about a hundred more trucks this piler could take. This is just us at the site being bored and doing some mathematics here. So here we are again, back at the harvest. Yesterday they said we were done, and then an hour later they changed their mind and decided they were gonna deliver mouse beats here, so. What is that? Our first truck. That is definitely not a truck that's ever delivered here. That guardrail, I've never seen one like that. He does have that guard on the right side of his truck, so I know he'll be loading, if he's smart, he'll be loading on the right side of the piler to make sure that that doesn't hit the dirt return. So I'm just gonna stay parked where I am because I'm kind of blocking the left side of the piler. Make sure he goes to the right. All right, we have those mouse feeds queuing up and we have another truck on the scale. Two trucks. Woo, woo. When uh, the, the piler operator walked by, he did a little jump of joy that there was a truck. That's what it comes to at this point in the season when everybody just wants the trucks to flow in and to wrap it up. <laughs> oh, I tried so hard to swerve to avoid it. I just caught the edge of my tire. Arr, this morning, this was like five o'clock in the morning. That's the worst of it. It's not that bad, I guess. <laughs> one pile. Sugar beet, sugar beet, sugar beet. And I don't know if you can see those little pink flags. That's for each day that we piled. So the distance between them is what you can pile in a day. I don't think we'll have any trucks very early this morning. See that? Frost. It's pretty chilly this morning. It's time to get out of Michigan. Tell you what. So here's the truck. It drives past the open gate. Can that gate comes swinging closed behind the truck? They'll put the wing down. They'll finish putting that bucket down, and then the truck will back into that bucket. Once he backs in, he'll put his parking brake on, he'll release the back door and he'll start to raise his dump truck. Watch that back door kick out. It just kicked out so he stopped raising him because that means the beats are flowing. So I operate similar to the person on this piler and roughly I lift the box in the first time to about the height of the dirt return, roughly, depending on the truck and how it's loaded. But that usually gets the beats to flow out for quite a while. You don't have to lift him like five or six times. You're lifting him like two to three times. You'll be able to tell when it's time to lift again because that back door, you see that triangle formed by that back door? That back door will start to, see it just kicked out again, so the beats are sliding down and pushing against that door. Once that door starts to go back towards the um, back of the truck, that means you need to lift them again because the beats have stopped flowing. Right, 
right, that's it. That's the end of uh, piling for me. It's 5.30 p.m. and we got word that as of midnight tonight, we are done piling at our site. So the night shift will finish it out and that'll be it. Um, we're going to come back in tomorrow morning. We're going to be here at 9. It's going to be luxury sleeping in. Um, and then we'll do some cleaning for a few hours. We need to clean that piler completely. Um, but with the amount of people that we have, it should be relatively quick. So we'll do that. And then that'll be it. That'll be the end of harvest. Oh, uh, so annoying. It's like 540 and I'm like awake. And one day I have to sleep in and I mean, I guess I slept in an hour. All right, this is it. I'm going in today for the last time. We finished piling last night. Um, there's still beets out there, but they're gonna divert them to a different site because um, there was only one farmer left hauling to our site. And it's not even a farmer that's usually designated to our site. So they'll, they'll re move them over to a different one to finish up. And uh, we're done. So I'm gonna go in today. We're all coming in, so there's quite a few of us and there's only one piler to clean. So I can't imagine it will take us very long at all to get that clean. So um, at most a couple hours and we should be done. And then I can say completed harvest season. Survived yet another sugar beet season. It ends up timing wise being a week later that I'm leaving Michigan than last year. It's almost the same number of harvest hauling days, but we started a week later because it was delayed that first week due to warm weather. So that week in the beginning that we didn't harvest got tacked onto the end. So it ended up being about three weeks of harvest, just like last year. But I'm gonna stop here just so you can see how big these piles are. That is all sugar beets. We have four piles like that.